I have talked a lot on this channel about the standard range plus model three. You guys know that, but I've also talked about the features that you're missing from the long range and performance that the higher end model threes that you just don't get on the lower end Tesla. But I'm gonna kind of turn the tables today and tell you something the standard range plus can do that the other Teslas just can't. And that's the ability to downgrade. You can actually downgrade the standard range plus to a standard range model three and Tesla will give you money back to put in your pocket. But before you contact Tesla and get the whole process started, let me explain why you probably do not want to do that. So I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but yes, this is actually possible. And this all kind of goes back about a year ago to the long promised and long rumored $35,000 Model 3. It took a while from that car to get from concept to production to the driveways of owners. So there was kind of this stopgap, the standard range plus. It was cheaper than the long range and performance Model 3s, right around $40,000 but it wasn't exactly close to at all the $35,000 base promised Model 3. So many people bought the Standard Range Plus as kind of, you know, the stopgap because that was the cheapest Tesla they could get at the time. But once Tesla finally produced and started selling the $35,000 Model 3, they were allowing owners of the Standard Range Plus to basically downgrade and remove features from their car if they didn't want them and didn't need them to get money back and get them a lot closer to that promised target price tag. So what would you be giving up to make this downgrade? Well, the Standard Range Plus has some things that the Standard Range Model 3 just does not have. It has autopilot, which you do not get on the Standard Range Model 3, arguably one of the biggest options that makes a lot of people flock to the Tesla ecosystem. And it's one of the main reasons I decided to go with the Standard Range Plus. I wanted the cheaper Tesla, I wanted to save money, but I knew I wanted to get autopilot and it is something I use basically every time I drive my Model 3. And that is a really big deal. But for some people, they just didn't want it. So they could get rid of it. It also has less range. The Standard Range Plus is currently rated at about 250 miles of range. When I got mine, it was about 240. And I think the Standard Range is rated around 220 miles at the absolute 100% maximum charge. So you're gonna lose about 20 to 30 miles of range. There's also no fog lights. There is no immersive sound, but I'll get back to that in a minute. And you also are going to have a little bit of a slightly slower zero to 60 time. But if you want the most bang for your buck Tesla and you really want that $35,000 car, you're probably not super concerned about performance. So a couple of things to clarify. The card still has the hardware for autopilot and can even be added for an additional cost through the Tesla app if you own a standard range car, but there is no autopilot by default on the standard range Model 3. The car still has traffic aware cruise control, which basically means that it can sense the flow of traffic and knows the cars in front of you and behind you, and it can drive to the speed of traffic, but it does not have auto steer. So the car can technically not be in autopilot mode and be able to drive itself. You have to keep two hands on the road two eyes on the road, two hands on the wheel, and you basically have to drive the car itself with a little bit of better and improved cruise control than just what you get in a standard old car. Uh, that is still there and autopilot can be added after the fact if you choose to do so. Also a clarification on the audio system. Not having the immersive sound option on the standard range might sound like a big deal, but as someone who has a standard range plus, I'll tell you turning that toggle on and off makes absolutely zero audible difference, in my opinion, to anything I can hear. It just doesn't seem like it makes any difference at all. I do know that on the full premium interior with the full premium sound system, it does make a difference, though some people prefer it off or on, uh, but in the standard range Model 3, it makes no difference. And also the standard range plus and the standard range Model 3s share the same audio system. Them. So you're not really losing out on anything. You're still gonna have the same audio system, which doesn't sound as good as the premium one, but in my opinion, sounds pretty good. You're just not gonna have the immersive sound option, which again, in all honesty, probably makes zero difference. So you're losing out on some things, but you're still getting a pretty great car. The spread of difference between the two cars is about $5,000. There's title and dock and destination fees, but let's just call the standard range $35,000 and the standard range plus about $40,000. For a lot of people, they'd rather save the five thousand dollars and not have autopilot they don't need as much range they don't need a faster zero to 60 time and they're perfectly fine just having the car as it is which still actually gives you a lot of things and let me just clarify a bit more on some of the features that the standard range car is not the standard range plus the standard range model 3 still has you still have all the hardware for autopilot. Like I said, you still have the same sound system as the standard range plus. You still have the emergency braking features and all the emergency 
features of the car still work across all the Model 3s. They all work the same. You still have Sentry Mode. You still have Dash Cam. You get a lot of car for this price. You even have the ability, thanks to version 10 and premium connectivity, to get all the same software options as the Performance Model 3 in your $35,000 standard range Model 3. You can do music streaming. You can get a web browser to connect to the web. You can watch YouTube videos and Netflix via streaming. Uh, you can have satellite maps and live traffic. You can do everything that you can on the other Teslas and the higher end Model 3s on the standard range for $35,000, though you will have to pay $10 for premium connectivity, though I think that's a very small price to pay for all the features you get. And again, one of the nice things about this car is that if you change your mind, you can upgrade via over-the-air software upgrades. It's gonna cost you a pretty penny to get autopilot and full self-driving and all that stuff, but you have the option to do it through the app, including even adding a uh, rear heated back seats is also an option for the standard range car that you can do via the Tesla app through software. Uh, like I said, you're gonna have to pay for it, but it is an option included for that car. So if the standard range Model 3 is sounding more and more appealing and you wanna downgrade your car, maybe you wanna buy the standard range car, let me kinda of walk you through how this process works. It does not involve a trip to the service center. You don't have to bring your car in a Tesla. You can do this over the phone in about five minutes. It's all done by a software. And the way that is able to be happening is because these cars are the same. The standard range and standard range plus have the same battery. They have the same hardware for autopilot. They have the same speaker system, the same interior, all of this is essentially the same because they're the exact same car. In fact, if you wanna order a standard range car because it is technically off menu, you actually order a standard range plus first. That's how the car exists in the Tesla system. And they're able to kind of go in over the air over software and just software disable features, which gives you the option to have that $35,000 car and also add those features back if you want to at any given time. So if you wanna have Tesla downgrade your standard range plus to a standard range, all you have to do is call. It should happen over the air via, I don't even think it's a software update. It's just happens over software in about a few minutes uh, and you should be good to go and get your money back. I will say I have heard some conflicting reports. This was a lot more popular about six months ago and Tesla did, I think, impose some kind of deadline. You had to be able to downgrade your car before a certain date or they weren't gonna do it. Though I have heard of people over the last couple of months still being able to do this successfully. So if it's something you are still very interested in, you wanna do it, I'd give Tesla a call. They should be able to still allow you to downgrade and you will get some money back. So how much do you actually get back if you go through with this process? Well, about six months ago, people were reporting it was about $1,500 plus tax. So anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 where you were getting back as a credit or I believe it's a check from Tesla. You're just getting that money back from Tesla as a refund. I'm not sure what that figure is these days and that could vary on a number of factors, but I think it's about the $1,500 ballpark if they're still gonna go ahead and do that downgrade. So will I downgrade my standard range plus to a standard range Model 3? Unfortunately, I will not. I'm sorry if anybody thought I would. I love autopilot too much. I love uh, being able to use as much of that battery as I can to use every ounce of that 240 miles of range as I can. Uh, and I just, uh, I prefer the standard range plus and the feature set that you get with that over the standard range. The $35,000 standard range Model 3 is still one heck of a great value and it is one heck of a great car. Uh, so what do you guys think? Would you downgrade a standard range plus to a standard range? Would you downgrade your Tesla Model X, Model S? Model Y, Model 3 variant, if you could, if you could lose a little bit of uh, performance and a little bit of range, but get some money back, would you do that? Leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Uh, and as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support, the comments, the thumbs up, the feedback. I appreciate all of it. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.